Hello everyone and welcome to Civilization 5. I've just started a new game as Catherine of the Russian Empire and today um, we're going to go through some of the starting techniques. Um, so things like where should I found my first city, what um, units should I build first, all that sort of thing um, we're going to cover in this quick wee tutorial video. So um, for starters when you spawn in you probably want to move your warrior. Um, just to have a wee scout around and see what's nearby. Um, because usually, if you have strategic balance and that sort of thing on, uh, and start bias, the game will um, choose a position for your settler that is a good place for a city, right? And so here, the main thing that we want to achieve here is to um, get some resources within our boundaries. Um, and to, to show those up, I've just clicked Toggle Map Options menu on off down the bottom here, um, and I've turned Resource Icons on. Um, I've also turned hex grid on just to make it a wee bit easier um, and if you tick yield icons you'll see uh, how much of each resource a tile will produce if it's worked and within your city borders. Um, but I'm going to turn that off because it's a wee bit busy. Um, yeah, so, so generally speaking you want to just actually found a city with your settler where it's been spawned. Um, along the coast is handy because it means we can build ships. Um, it does also make us of course uh, susceptible and a wee bit weak for um, naval attacks but we're going to deal with that. Um, being along a river is really great too. Um, if there was a mountain nearby, we might want to move and go near the mountain because there are some late game bonuses for mountains. Um, but here's a pretty good spot, you know. We're going to have lots of spices within our borders, um, as well as some deer, some furs, some cattle will eventually get out to them. Uh, we've got a river, we've got some fertile land, we've got a wee bit of desert here, which is not ideal because it tends to be less than productive. Um, but that's alright. Um, so also exploring with your warrior is a great start. We want to try and map out the world around us and, and really get a feel for what's nearby. Um, the next big thing that you'll have to deal with is to choose a starting research, a starting technology, um, and also production. So if we start with the technology, um, it really depends on what's near you. So I have some deer nearby, um, and so to work them, I might want to go down the pasture uh, animal husbandry route to eventually get to the deer. Um, otherwise, it really depends on your specialization. So if you just hover over each one of these, you'll get an idea of what each tech will give you. Uh, I'm going to go for pottery because I'd like to build the, the granary and the shrine quite early on. Um, and my economic advisor recommends that I do that. Um, if we open the tech tree, we can also see that writing comes after pottery. And so if I choose to, I could rush into writing and build the Great Library, um, which is a, a, an important science building. Um, now that we've um, selected our research, we need to choose our production. Uh, it recommends building a monument. I, however, would suggest that perhaps you don't build the monument. Um, and instead you build another unit. Now it's up to you whether you build a scout, a warrior, or a worker. Um, in this case, I'm not going to need a worker for a wee while yet, so I'm going to um, either build a scout or a warrior. I'm going to build a scout to start with. Um, the reason why I suggest you don't build the monument in your first turn is because once we get to a certain level with our um, cultural policies up the top there, we'll actually be able to get monuments for free. Um, within the first four cities. So we don't really need to to build them at the stage. Um, next you'll see that we've found an ancient ruin. Uh, if you walk your unit over it, you will receive an, a reward. Uh, my reward's been a pretty crap one. It's show me the locations of barbarian encampments. Uh, there's one there, one up there, and one there. Great, so we're actually pegged in on all sides, which is hilariously awesome. Um, so basically you just want to keep scouting around with your warrior. Uh, we've found a natural wonder, Old Faithful. Unfortunately, it looks like there's some borders here, and they're probably going to expand out um, and take Old Faithful there from us, but that's fine. Riga. Damn you, Riga. You're going to steal that natural wonder, aren't you? <laughs> um, so we'll just flick through the turns, exploring around, um, and remembering that now that we've built a scout, which is a much faster unit in terms of how many squares it can walk, um, we can get exploring a lot quicker. Um, next up, I would suggest you probably want to build a worker, um, although it is quite slow in this case, but that's fine. We'll build a worker. What that's going to do, another city-state, what that's going to do is 
um, allow us to improve the tiles of our city, to improve the yield of our city, um, which is quite important. Now, basically, you just want to keep scouting around because there will be more ancient ruins um, and resources for you to discover. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to plot out a location for our second city. So um, perhaps, you know, down in here somewhere might be a good spot because we'll be able to get salt uh, and gems if Kiev don't expand to them. So that could be uh, an ideal location. Uh, once your first research finishes, you'll have to pick a second one, which we'll do in a second. But first, we're going to claim a couple of ruins. Boom. So we that was really lucky. So sometimes when you find a ruin, you can get a technology. We got writing, uh, which is really, really strong for us. Because basically, we researched, if you have a look at the tech tree, we researched pottery and then we got writing for free, meaning we can now build the Great Library. This is like the perfect Great Library rush. Um, so for my next tech, I'm just going to choose one of these starting ones. I'm going to choose Animal Husbandry, uh, not only because it'll let me um, create a trade route, an additional one, a pasture, but it'll also reveal horses on the map, another resource which will appear on one of these tiles. Um, another ruins, we got some gold. This is absolutely brilliant. We are streaming ahead of the competition in, in all manner of ways. Oh, we've met another player. We've met Indonesia. Uh, whereabouts are you? Oh, okay. So they've sent a warrior down. So they're probably over this way somewhere. That's cool. Um, now, you'll notice up here there was some some very sort of barren looking tiles. This is tundra tiles. Um, they indicate that you're getting close to the pole. Uh, the frozen wasteland at the top or bottom of your world. Um, and they tend to have pretty crappy... Um, yield. So you'll see each one's only really giving one food. Um, whereas these rich tiles near the um, near a river will give two food by default and the resources will give even more. Um, each little apple of course represents how much food it will give. So we want to ideally not build up there um, because the the land is just not useful really. So we'll carry on We'll stream through these turns quite quickly. If you're playing, um, if you're playing along at home, you may want to take it a bit slower. Um, you might also want to click on your city and then go citizen management up the top there, um, and you can choose a, a focus. So you can choose to swap to a production focus, and you'll see over here my production unit increased by one. If I swap it back to food, I'm back to five, but I'm getting plus two food. So I'm going to keep it on default. Um, or food focus at the moment. Either either is fine, I believe. No, and so we're just going to keep exploring, keep scouting around. We might loop back around and under Moscow now um, that we've had a good look over this way. Next turn. We finished our research of animal husbandry, which is awesome. Um, and so now we can choose yet another research. Um, Trapping will let us construct a camp. If we were under military threat, we would go archery. Um, there is not necessarily a right or wrong decision. Uh, it just depends on your game plan. So I'm probably going to build the Great Library quite quickly. So I'm going to um, rush through writing, which I've got already, which is brilliant. Um, now I'm thinking maybe I might do trapping so that I can use my worker uh, who's going to be built very soon in our city um, and produce you know a unit which um, or, or produce tiles which will improve our city so Moscow has grown it's now three population uh, every excess food that you have will add to your population um, right and so now this is where it gets interesting because now we can um, start building the Great Library now this is a, a strategy which I wouldn't recommend normally if you're new to the game and you're trying to figure out how to play it, the next best thing you should build will be the granary because it will give your city extra food. See, plus two food, um, which is going to be really important for your growth. And actually, maybe I might want to delay building the Great Library to build a granary first. That's a totally viable strategy. Um, if you were desiring rapid expansion and you wanted a second city, here you would divert off onto the settler path and you might want to build another settler, um, which is the unit that we had at the start of the game, which you can then move somewhere and found a new city. Um, I would be tempted with the Great Library Rush, but I'm going to build the granary. Uh, it's probably 
all round a better move. The reason why... Oh, hello, Venice. Goodbye, Venice. The reason why rushing the Great Library might not be a great move is because it will stunt our city's growth. Um, so now that I've clicked the worker, I can move them like any other unit and improve tiles. So um, I need calendar, I need trapping to improve those resources. So I'm just going to walk down here where this um, little, f I recommend you construct a farm. Tooltip is, uh, and I'm going to construct a farm. It'll take four turns, and after the four turns is up, that tile will give me one extra food. The excess food will then go into our city, and it will appear up here. So see, we have two base food because we have eight minus six, which is eaten. Um, and extra base food means that your city will grow quicker, which ideally is at this stage in the game what we want. So we'll just keep on running, we'll run past Venice. Bye Venice. I will accept your embassy, that's fine. Always accept embassy. Right, so now we come to the end of the uh, super early game. We're at turn 15 um, and we've now got the ability, we've accumulated enough culture, which we're getting one per turn, um, to purchase a social policy. Now, boom, the first time looking at the social policy tree, it can be a bit confusing. Um, so we'll adopt a policy, tradition, liberty, honor, or piety, and then we'll move through each time we get to our culture limit. In this case, it's 15. Next time it might be 18 or something like that. Um, we can get another ability. And so it's tricky what to choose for early players because you look through and you read each one, you read tradition is best for small empires. Liberty is best for large ones. Um, honor is best for your army and piety is good for faith. Generally speaking, you want to choose tradition and, and this might be a wee bit contested, but as a general rule of thumb, tradition is the best one. Unless you're planning on expanding really, really rapidly and really, really quickly and super aggressive, like you're playing the Mongolians, Attila the Hun, you know, or something. Tradition's probably going to be the best for you. So we'll click adopt of the tradition policy. Um, and adopting tradition greatly increases the rate of border expansion in your cities and also grants three culture in your capital. So you'll see up the top now we're getting four culture per turn. Um, it also unlocks the ability for us to build a building. Once we get all of them, um, it'll grant us plus 15% growth and a free aqueduct in our, our first four cities. So basically now each time we reach that cultural limit, we get to adopt a new policy inside of tradition. Now, um, what we want to do is we want to get to legalism. So we'll have to go oligarchy and then legalism. And that provides a free culture building in your first four cities. Um, I'll give you a spoiler. The free culture building is the monument. So um, by picking tradition and then buying two policies inside of it, we'll get the monument for free. And that is why inside of our production, we chose not to build the monument. We've effectively saved ourselves um, six turns by going through tradition. What have we lost by not building it? Well, the monument does give you culture, so we did slow ourselves down a wee bit. Um, but also the monument acts to um, expand your borders because culture helps your borders grow. So you'll see Moscow has grown out there to grab that tile, and it will slowly do that over time. Um, but in a game like this, where there's lots of spare space, it's not important. So um, I would highly recommend that you go the tradition route. So overall, um, through this game, and through this quick tutorial, we've looked at um, how you should spend your first production, what you should build, uh, what researches you might want to um, look into. And also, we've discussed social policies and the best one for you. Um, just to reiterate, in most instance, instances, you want to choose the research that best fits what's around your city. So um, in my case, I chose pottery because I wanted to perhaps go down the religious route or rush build the great library. Um, if you had lots of deer, you might have wanted to um, go straight to trapping, first of all. It all depends on your strategy. Ultimately, you can't really go wrong with the first text. Um, tradition is generally the best social policy tree to go down at the start of the game. Tradition and rationalism are the two that I will always go for. Rationalism comes much later in the game. Um, and in terms of units, you just want to get your units out and around and exploring the world so that you can choose a position for your second city. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please do leave a like rating or leave some comments, some feedback, you know. Am I talking way too fast and not at all being helpful? If that's true, which it probably is, please let me know. Um, and if you did enjoy it and you would like to see more, um, I'm happy to perhaps 
explore this game a wee bit more. Maybe we'll look at um, tips for founding your second city in the next video. Other than that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.